We know the shape of the graph for an exponential growth function. We also know the shape of a graph for a logarithmic function that has a positive leading coefficient. Because the values on the exponential function are getting so large so quickly, by switching those x and y coordinates, we slow the rate of growth, making the numbers a little bit easier to analyze. When we enter those data values into our piece of technology to produce that curve of best fit, we're going to follow the same steps we previously did for regression. We're going to enter the data, go into stat, arrow over to calculate, and this time you're going to go down and choose number 9, which is logarithmic regression. You're going to notice it uses the natural log. So when they generate that equation for you, it's always going to be in this form. A is the constant term, the one without a variable attached. B is going to be your leading coefficient. As always, when we go to enter that data into our calculator, we first need to determine which is your independent variable and which is your dependent variable. With logarithmic regression, the shape of the graph isn't always as obvious as you might think because it is the inverse to exponential. Sometimes it's really tricky to differentiate between the two of them based on the graph alone. So there's a couple of other clues you want to look at. First thing is that we know on a logarithmic graph, we have a vertical asymptote, and in our case, it's going to lie on the y-axis. That means if we are never going to touch that y-axis, we will never have an x value of zero. So you cannot take the log of zero. If you see a table of values and there's a zero in that table, you know that zero has to be the y value. It can't be the x value. And you can see it doesn't make sense. The exponent on any base that gives a value of zero, there just isn't one. So if you see a zero in the table of values, that's your clue, that's gonna be your y coordinate. And then the other column is obviously the x. The other thing is the way the question is worded. So it's going to say something is a function of something else. That first word is your dependent variable. That second word becomes your independent variable. In our first example, we're comparing the caffeine level in someone's system over the course of time. The question asks us to determine the logarithmic regression, and so we have to pay attention with logarithmic because we're often switching those x and y values, which is independent, which is dependent. There is no zero in the table of values, so that's not going to help me, but we do have the question worded where it says time is a function of caffeine. So we know that time is our y variable and therefore goes into list two. Caffeine is our x variable and therefore goes into list one. We'll grab your calculator and we're going to first turn on the stat plot because it's regression. We're going to check our window. Now in this case, remember that caffeine is on the x-axis. So we want to be a little bit lower than our minimum and a little bit higher than our maximum and then set an appropriate scale. Same thing with the y-axis. We're going to go into stat, edit, and we're going to enter our data values. And then to get that curve of best fit, we're going to go back into stat, over to calculate, and then we can go down here or you can arrow up, but I just want you to see, so nine. We are not using eight, okay? So don't go to number eight, it's nine. It's that natural log regression that we want. So we're gonna choose that one. And then we're gonna go list one, comma, list two, comma, variables, over to y variables, enter, enter, enter. And this particular question says we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. Now remember, if you have a TI-84, when you get to that list one, list two, it will already be in your calculator. Just go down to where it says store regression equation and that's where you begin to do the VARS part. Making sure that we round properly, we need to substitute the values in for A and B. You can either choose to do T equals, and then that's related to the caffeine level, or if you want to use X and Y, that also suffices. In the second part of the question, we're asked to use the equation to determine the time it takes to metabolize 50% of the caffeine. So we're looking for time. We can see that we started with 200 milligrams of caffeine. So 50% of that is going to be what is the time when the caffeine level gets to 100 milligrams. Even though it says to use the equation, we do eventually have to check our answer against the graph. So I'm going to do the graph first, just because I have my calculator up here. So I'm going to take a look at the graph. And we should now, because we did that VARS part, have our curve of best fit. 
go back up to your sketch here and you can see that time is on the y-axis when the x value is 100. So I'm going to go second function trace and I'm going to choose number one, which allows me to put in an X value of 100. And when we do that, we can see that the caffeine level comes out to be 6.07 hours. Now, when I use my equation, because T is already isolated, I can just take this whole thing and substitute in my C value, which is 100. I can then enter that in. So you can see we've typed this in here. Remember your lawn button is right here. And now if we run to the nearest hundredth, it's 6.0, this nine bumps that to a six. So the answers on the equation compared to the graph will be close, but they're not exact. So if they tell you to use the equation, then you substitute it. If they tell you to use the graph, then you need to get that value from your graph. In the next question, we're asked to determine the amount of caffeine. Go up here and we can see that's the X. So we're looking for X when time is. Now we start drinking coffee at 10 a.m. We're trying to check how much caffeine is in her system at 9 p.m. So 11 hours later, because the data given to us is measured in hours, we are looking for that level of caffeine. Now again, it asks us to use the equation, but I'm going to do the graph first of all. So we're going to Go into Y2 and enter that 11. That's going to produce our horizontal line straight across. And then we're going to go second function trace. Number five is the point of intersection. You're going to use the left or right arrows to move your cursor so that you're close to that point where the graphs cross. And then we're going to press enter, enter, enter. Because it tells us in the original question that we're rounding everything to the nearest hundredth, I rounded that off to 15.6, include the appropriate units. In this case, caffeine is measured in milligrams. Okay, so we have our equation. We've substitute 11 in for the value of time and we're looking for C. To isolate the variable, we're first gonna say, is there any piece that we can remove by adding or subtracting? So we can subtract 42.44 from both sides. And then we're gonna say, is there any piece that we can divide or multiply to get isolated to this variable? We can divide out that negative 7.9 and again, do it to both sides. So you can see on the calculator there, I've entered those values. I need to keep this full value until the end. Now remember, this says this is the exponent on base E that gives us a value of this. So if that's the exponent on base E, I'm going to go second function and then ln. That's going to give us that E to the power of X. And then I'm going to go second function answer to put that exponent in there. And the value is 53.3 milligrams. It's close to what we got on the graph, but this is the value that they're asking for. And it should be close. So just check that you are in fact on the right track.